Hey, we're getting ready to head over to uh, Florence, Oregon. We're going to go pick up some rabbits today. And, um, yeah, get some real protein on the homestead. And I think that might complete the homestead in addition to uh, waiting for those, waiting for June to get those two little bucklings over here so I can breed them with my does this December. So let's get on the road. It's going to take me four hours to get over there, about an hour to just sit around, chat, load up, and another four hours to get home because i got to go to work at 4.30 in the morning. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I gotta take a little trip today. Uh, we're gonna head over and pick up some um, meat rabbits. These are New Zealand breed. I'm picking up two trios of the gal is say, uh, selling um, two sets of trios, well several, several sets of trios, but she was uh, selling them in uh, like two does and one buck for a hundred bucks. So I bought two sets. One set is for my daughter and her homestead and another set is for myself and my homestead for the bunny bungalow. So these rabbits, well, they're considered groceries. They're necessity for the homestead. Because according to a report by WHO, WHO, or the World Health Organization, because of the global pandemic, they're now anticipating a uh, global food shortage. So, that is something else for folks to have to be aware of and contend with. But uh, hey, guys that live out in urban communities, have little backyards or patios, you can have a couple of chickens, collect some eggs, get a pair of rabbits, and have uh, a lot of protein available, and start growing some vegetables once you can start buying seeds in your area. I know some governments and some municipalities have locked it down to where you can't buy seed which is kind of ridiculous because that is groceries that you need to get in the ground to uh, ward off or stave off the um, famine to ward off the famine that's coming or that they're predicting that is coming um, I don't know if it's going to manifest, but I would rather be cautious and be prepared. That way I can uh, feed my family and help my neighbors out too. That's very important. So I'm almost to my destination. We'll get these rabbits loaded up and make our trek back over hill and across dale back to the homestead. This will be a all day adventure for me and it's uh, one of those necessary things to try to get groceries on the farm. There we go. Yay, we made it home. Back on the homestead. Well, oh boy. That was a three and a half hour trip. One way. Oh. Seven hours. Uh, so we got him home. So let's get them back up. Let's get them uncarded so you guys can see them. 
and uh, get them loaded into their cages up the bunny bungalow. Hey, uh, for a product review, um, think twice before you purchase those uh, hold down straps from Harbor Freight. This part's fine. I've had every one of these have failed on me. The cheap plastic and then something down here has broken off too. And this one came out completely missing. It's these little levers here. So reconsider where you're going to spend your money on these. If you're going to buy uh, something like this, try something with a little bit better quality. Uh, Harbor Freight. I'm giving it a two thumbs down because these tie down straps suck and I bought a set of four and I've only have one that I rarely use and that's all, that one is the only good one I have but it'll break soon too that's the nature of it one good product from Harbor Freight is this cargo net that's that's worth it I haven't been disappointed with this And now the reveal. Hey, buddy. There you guys are. I got a buck right here in uh, this cage right here. And I got another buck right here. Uh, this guy, let me get him up there in the cage and uh, in their prospective cages and I'll get the, uh, introduced to them because they have interesting bloodlines. Uh, no, no two of them are related. They're all individual bloodlines from different parts of the country except for uh, Two of them. I'll check my list to see what we got. But anyway, uh, yeah, let's get these up. Okay, I think I'll use this cage as my carrier. Okay, buddy. Here we go. Okay. There you go. This is a buck. Since bucks spray, they go in the bottom cages. So let's take you and put you in the bottom cage over here. Come on, guy. Come on. Welcome to your new home. One down, five to go. Let's go get that other buck and then we'll bring the dough up. Okay, here's my other buck. him in that cage down there. Come here guy. Come on. Come on. Oh my gosh. Beautiful rabbits. No, get your toe out of there. Come on. There you go. Alright. Move your butt. Come on. <laughs> Move your butt. No, you have to go in. 
Alright. Now, I do want you guys to note, my rabbits are a little bit spoiled. Because, okay, they got air conditioning, and they've got shelter from the rain, and from the freezing cold, and they each have a tile to stand on, so they're not on that screen bottom all, uh, all the time, and they have toys to play with, so they're not so bored. And I give them other treats and other toys as I collect them. But look at my new water bottles. I love these. I just uh, fill them from the top. Just like that. And then they have those little uh, nipples inside there. Yeah. So uh, let's get the uh, four does homed. And uh, let's see, I'll put two here and two there. And that should do it. Leave all the center cages empty. So let's get them home and uh, I see if I can get them all carried in one cage here to make one trip. And I just kind of slide it on that bench so the door faces out. All right. I just got to rehome them. So my, sh my son showed up just in the nick of time. To help me carry those four dough up. They're about five pounds a piece, so that was 20 pounds, including the cage. Yeah, he's been out, uh, you know, fire suppression. He works, he's a wildland firefighter, so he works for a fire crew. And he's another one of those uh, essential crews that are needed to suppress the fire danger. Yeah, so let's go, do, let's get these girls home and I'll go over the bloodline with you guys okay in no particular order we're gonna come on baby uh, lift your butt okay all right new home there you go Okay, come on, sweetie. Uh, boop. And you go right here. Okay. okay. Move in. Let's put you in the middle. Oh, don't scratch me. No, 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 no. Good girl. I have the rabbitry gal mark their ears with different colors and then tell me which ones what, what their names are and what, um, come on, move your butt, what their names are and what, um, how old are they are and uh, where they're from. Okay, one last one. In you go. Here you go. I gotta get them set up with water and food. And try out this new water bottle style. It just, uh, it's just the top feed. You don't have to take the bottle off. Okay, then just snap it shut. Huh. Yep, it works. Let's water through. Um, well, we'll give these a try. I'll have to purchase, uh, let's see. Six more. Six. Five more. I need five more to use on all my cages.
Okay, they all got water. Now I gotta feed them. Okay, let's double check. Food, food, water, water. Uh, oops, I forgot somebody. Luckily, I was taking stock here. Completely forgot one. Gotta have food. Here you go, sweetie. Everybody's got food and water. They got a slate on which to rest on so they're not on those wire bottoms. And they each got their toys. I think they're going to be okay. Uh, they just got to get past this uh, being in their new home and get used to the, uh, well, the whole new climate because they went from the ocean shores up to the Cascade Mountains so I don't doubt that they're a little bit stressed so let me go get my notes and I will go over the breed with you and the uh, the, the bloodline okay now I got my cages marked with Roman numerals there's nine cages and those Roman numerals are marked on each feeder box now the feeder box can accommodate a card with a bio of each rabbit. So I'll make up those cards on my computer, print out the cards, and then slide them in here. That way I can come in and uh, see at a glance who is who. But for the sake of uh, identifying them when I brought them from the uh, rabbit tree over at the coast, I had her mark each rabbit ear with a different color. So the, there's four different colors on the doe's ears. And then uh, one buck is marked, the other one is not. And then I have the list right here of who's who. Okay, now let, let's go over these bloodlines of these rabbits and also like what rabbitry they came from because they come from a variety of different states. Let's start up here on top with box number three. This little girl, uh, her name is Mist. She comes from Georgia. She is nine months old, and she has the blue mark on her ear, and she's in cage number three. Now, she was mated with a buck about two, three days ago, and his name was, I believe, Ger Geronimo. There was two bucks that the, uh, the gal who owned the rabbit tree, she bred all four of these rabbits to different bucks that are unrelated to the bucks I just bought. So the babies are even going to be a more diversified blood bloodline. So I'll have to call her tonight and find out which you know which doe was bred to which buck. That way I know which bloodline to separate and keep my records straight. Okay, this doe behind uh, door number four uh, or cage four. This is Haley. Haley has a red mark in her ear. She is from Florida. She also is nine months old, uh, the same as Mist, but Mist comes from Georgia. And uh, cage number five, this is Jane. Jane comes from Florida, just like Haley, the one next door to her. But Jane is eight months old. She has the black mark on her ear. And uh, neither rabbit comes from the same bloodline. They had different moms and different dads. 
This is cage number six. And in this cage is my final doe. Her name is Sage. Sage has a green marking in her ear. Sage is also eight months old, just like uh, Jane, the one next door to her. Uh, but she comes from Georgia. So I have two eight-month-olds does, one from Georgia and one from Florida. And I have two nine-month-old does one from Florida, one from Georgia. So they're four unique bloodlines and then of course they've been bred so they're pregnant and uh, two of these does go to my daughter and two stay here and I only have two nesting boxes but if I include my old wooden ones I could put those in here and accommodate the does with the old wooden ones unless my daughter's gonna go purchase some. Okay let's look at the boys. In cage number seven This will be uh, uh, a male, and his name, he came with the name of uh, Patrick Dune. He has papers. This rabbit is 18 months old, and this rabbit ooh, is a special rabbit. He's developed down at Texas A&M University. He's a Tamuk rabbit, which is New Zealand, and it's a breed from uh, A&M, uh, fostered by A&M University. The rabbitry owner purchased his mom, and he came with his mom, so she sold him to me. And this final buck in cage number nine, this buck goes by the name of Mace. He came with the name Mace. He is 10 months old, and he's from Arizona. Now, from what the gal who I purchased them from um, told me, uh, he is, he's from Arizona, from NZ Rabbitry, and he came out of NZ Rabbitry before the rabbitry burnt to the ground, uh, and I feared destroying all the rabbits, so I've got, I was fortunate enough, uh, fortunate enough to get a bloodline from NZ. If uh, folks at NZ want to continue with their bloodline, I could accommodate them with some offspring from him. Uh, I don't have any does available to breed right now, but maybe we can get something together for them to, to uh, rebuild their bloodline. And uh, yeah, there are also she told me that the uh, rabbit tree in Florida burnt to the ground too, and I have two does from the Florida uh, rabbit trees. What's with these rabbit trees burning to the ground? Huh, that's sad. Well, that's it on the whole adventure today of going and picking up some meat rabbits uh, for the homestead. So we're back in the rabbit business, yes. And hopefully we prepared for, uh, to kind of soften the edges of uh, a an alleged famine that may be coming so hopefully it doesn't happen I pray it doesn't happen anyway before I left she gifted me with this bag of seed and I'm gonna plant these seed and grow them uh, looks like there's about 10 seed in here or a dozen uh, these are papa uh, I've heard of them in a jungle book when Baloo the bearer was singing about the pawpaw tree. Anyway, I, I know I, when I was navigating through YouTube and watching people go out and cultivate uh, natural things that grow in their environment, they were talking about the pawpaw that they were uh, harvesting from, which is a native of our continent right here in America. And it, I think it just grows around the south, southeast regions of the United States. Uh, but I'm looking forward to growing these and uh, planting them around my homestead. Like maybe get me started on a, what do, they, what do they call that, a food forest. Anyway, protein and fruit. Ha ha. Okay, I'm officially exhausted. I had a long day. I started out at 6 o'clock this morning. I'm going to go drink some tea, call this lady, and get some more details on the bucks that she bred those does with. 
and I'll let you guys know in a future video. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. We're a frugal homestead tucked up here on the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. Now we're back in the business of rabbits. So please stay tuned to more videos. You can do that by subscribing, then clicking that bell icon. And that bell icon, what it does is it alerts you to new videos as I upload them. If you would uh, please do this, do me a favor, click that share button and share my videos on your social media platforms like your Facebook and Twitter, Tumblr. And uh, also give me a thumbs up and share a comment with me. We'll see you guys in the next adventure. Bye-bye.